Okay, so this is the review for exam four, and we're gonna start with respiratory. My eye pencil is not charged, so we're gonna see how far this goes. So the first thing I have on here is make sure you know the difference between the upper and the lower respiratory tract. So, and this is kind of a, not a good picture, but <laughs> so here's the lungs, right? Here's the trachea. And at the top of the trachea, that's where the larynx is. And that's the dividing point, right? So anything that is down deep in your lungs is considered lower respiratory tract, where anything that's above that, so that's in the head and the neck, is upper. Okay, so the deeper it is, the harder it is for your body to um, take care of it. Shoot, hold on, I'm messing with something. I'm making this recording, it is. All right, so um, that's the big difference. Okay, now the mucociliary escalator, okay, that is the, the trachea, right? is lined with cilia and mucus. So those sweep up. And what's happening is the, the cilia and the mucus is capturing foreign things that come into your body and trapping it. And then you sweep it up and you swallow it. So you never know that it's in there. But if um, someone smokes, what can happen is the cilia will break off and you won't have that sweeping action. So if you smoke and the cilia break off, you're more prone to um, respiratory disease. So, and it takes you longer to recover from it. Okay, so that's an important immune system part of your respiratory tract. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of like not paying attention here. Okay, now, Pink eye, um, ear ache, and sinus infection. So pink eye is conjunctivitis. Ear ache is otitis media, because it's in the middle ear. Um, sinus infections are just sinusitis. Okay, so in general, these are caused by two organisms. So you should know these, Haemophilus influenza and Streptococcus pneumonia. Okay, so those are the big causal agents of the stuff that's in your head. Um, how are they treated and prevented? So they're going to be prevented by um, good hygiene, right? And then um, if they're bacterial, they can be treated with antibiotics. Okay, if pink eye can be viral, and if it's viral, it doesn't have the pus that you have, they're not as red and pussy as they are if it's bacterial. So that's one big difference. And if it's viral, you're not gonna treat it with antibiotics because it's not gonna do any good unless it develops into a secondary infection. Um, so this, this test is pretty much, um, you're gonna need to know the disease. Okay, what causes it? And in general, you need to know like something that's um, kind of distinguishes that disease or from the other diseases. So something that I could ask you a question about, right? So here's the, here are this group of diseases, here are the organisms that cause it. Okay, now streptococcus pharyngitis, that's strep throat. So the organism that causes it is Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay, so pyogenes is what causes it. How is it transmitted? So it's respiratory. So maybe drinking after someone or um, somebody coughs on you or you kiss them, something like that. Okay, so the symptoms are going to be a really sore throat and it ha will have a distinct smell and you'll get sores on your throat. So it's diagnosed with a rapid test, right? And possibly sometimes it depends, they'll culture it. So you guys know when you get a strep tested for strep, they will take, it depends on where you go and what's going on. 
they'll have two swabs and they'll swab. One swab will go to be cultured and the other swab will be used for the rapid. It used to be that they didn't trust the rapid results. Um, you can get false positives with it. So they check the rapid with the culture to confirm it. So that's why they might wait 24 hours to call you to tell you whether it's bacterial or not. So treatment's just gonna be antibiotics. Okay, now there are sequelae that can result from it. So sequelae are kind of like long-term side effects. It's gonna affect the whole, the whole body. So um, one of them is glomerular, nephritis. Okay, and the other one can be um, uh, heart disease, rheumatic fever. So rheumatic fever, the heart valves are damaged. Where in glomerular nephritis, the kidneys, the glomerulus was damaged. And I, I talk about all these things in the, the video and it's in the PowerPoint notes. Okay, now diphtheria, which I don't have the causal agent for it on here. Why don't I have that? Oh, here it is. Causal agent of diphtheria is Perinibacter, um, Perinibacter diphtheria. Okay, now it becomes pathogenic or virulent when it has infected by a phage. Okay, and that's when it'll start making the toxin. Okay, so it has to be, um, so Corinibacterium diphtheria. I think I spelled it right, yeah. Okay, so doesn't form spores. It's a gram positive rod. Okay, um, if you go here, it's not a concern now if everyone is vaccinated. So it used to be one of the number one killers of children under five. Okay, but if we vaccinate, so that's the DTAP. So diphtheria is the part of that. Okay, the symptoms that are really bad with it. Okay, so they don't feel good, right? So like cold-like symptoms, but the most notable thing that distinguishes it from everything else is this, it forms a pseudomembrane. Okay, so the pseudomembrane will form in the throat and it'll block off the air passageway. Um, yeah, right? Okay, so sequelae from, for it, from it are, it can result in, um, it can result in like brain damage and things like that. I'm trying and um, trying to see where it is in the book. Hold on. It has the ex so it's making this exotoxin, right? And that's what's causing the formation of the pseudomembrane. But it can cause um, kidney failure, heart disease, nerve problems. That's what actually would would kill them. Okay, and it's it's respiratory, right? So it's going to be droplets. Okay, now they can treat it with antibiotics, but they really, if somebody has it, they want to give them antitoxin. So this is the Balto story, right? And so if you watch the other video, we talk about Balto, the sled dog. So it's prevented with vaccine. Whoops. My writing's going downhill. Okay, so the organism that causes a common cold is the rhinovirus. Okay, we don't have vaccines for it because there's probably more than a hundred different kinds of rhinoviruses. So we're, we're in the virus thing right now, right? So virus infection of the upper respiratory system. Um, I know, I'm trying to see where it is in your book to tell you. Uh, yeah, I guess it's on, which you guys probably don't have the same page number, 548. Okay, so rhinovirus. Um, 
we don't have a vaccine for it because there's just so many different types of it. Okay, it's not enveloped. Where's that? Okay, so it's non enveloped. Okay, so it's harder to destroy. Um, signs and symptoms. So you guys know runny nose, all that kind of thing, right? Um, treatment and prevention, you treat the symptoms. Good hygiene. Okay, now another virus is the adenoviruses. Okay, so um, they cause runny nose, sore throat, um, but they usually have a fever, whereas a cold, there's no fever. So that's a distinguishing feature between the adenoviruses and the common cold. Um, sometimes people think that this could be strep, right? Because your throat hurts and you have fever. But um, yeah, no, <laughs> it's not strep. Um, so it's not enveloped, which I don't think I ask you that on here. Um, there's not really treatment because um, it's a virus, right? So you're just going to um, treat the symptoms and you're going to try to um, have good hygiene to present to prevent it. Okay, now whooping cough, right? Whooping cough is, um, is sorry, for Bordetella. Pertussis is the causal agent. So it's bacterial. Okay, we vaccinate against it. Okay, we can treat it with antibiotics. Um, the people that are at greatest risk are infants that don't have the full course of vaccination yet. So adults might have it and not have a lot of symptoms. We just think we're having, a, we have a cold. Okay, but we, the little kids can get infected from it. Okay, so this is considered lower respiratory tract. Okay, so it's down deep. Um, okay, so whooping cough has the three stages, right? So one of the stages is the catarrhal. That's the first one where they just start to cough and have cold-like symptoms. So maybe put catarrhal and cold, C and C. Okay, and then paroxysmal. Okay, that's where it gets worse. So the, they're coughing so much, they're throwing up, the blood vessels are bursting in, the, in their eyes. They can't keep anything down. Um, this is the, the worst part of it, right? They have the whooping cough, the cough where they're whoop, whooping. Um, and then convalescence is after that. Okay, and convalescence, you guys know, that's when we're healing and getting better. Okay, now pneumonia. Okay, so... Um, causal agents, so we have three types that how our, our um, book separates them. So the first one is pneumococcal pneumonia. So pneumococcal pneumonia is going to be caused by streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay, so um, it can kill old people. <laughs> okay, now the big thing about these two organisms is they have a capsule. Okay, so that remember the capsule is this like carbohydrate layer that's sticky on the outside. So that sticky layer is going to help increase their virulence because they're going to be able to like stick to your respiratory tract and then they're going to be hard to get rid of. Um, there's a picture in the textbook where they show the Klebsiella and how stringy and sticky it is. Um, Streptococcus pneumoniae is a diplococcus. So there's two um, cells together. Okay, so it's not a whole chain of it. Um, Klebsiella pneumonia is a gram-negative rod. Okay, so it causes um, really bad pneumonia too. So pneumonia can really take out people, can, can kill them. 
Um, there's the good summary chart. It's table 21.7. It summarizes all the different kinds of pneumonia. So um, most of like these two have a short like one to three day incubation period, whereas walking pneumonia is one to three weeks. Um, so they there were capsules is the big thing. Um, let's see, treatment. So there is a vaccine against pneumococcal pneumonia that they might give to elderly people, but for the most part, they, they're gonna treat them with antibiotics. And you guys know pneumonia is when there's fluid in your lungs. Okay, so walking pneumonia is also called atypical pneumonia. So it's caught, whoops, I'm spelling stuff wrong. Okay, it's caused by um, mycoplasm. So it's called mycoplasma pneumonia. Okay, so remember um, one way, because there's mycobacterium and people get those confused. So we maybe remember plasm has a P and pneumonia has a P. Right, so that you can remember this is the organism that causes this walking pneumonia. Like they call it walking pneumonia. It's it takes a long time for the symptoms to get really bad. So people just are really lethargic. They just don't feel well. Um, so they're walking around, maybe spreading it <laughs> because this organism grows really, really slow. Okay, so it's a really small organism. It grows really slow. That it looks like they look like fried eggs if you can get them to grow. Okay, now tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium. Okay, so see the difference between the plasma and the bacterium. So mycobacterium, tuberculosis. Um, right? Hold on, I wanna make sure I spell tuberculosis. Okay, so that's TB is what we call it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, tuberculosis, it's historically been a really bad disease, but because we worked so hard to control it, it's not as bad as it used to be. There is a vaccine for it, but we don't give it in the United States. Um, so the organism, it's called acid fast. So if you remember from the very beginning, it has a waxy cell wall. So it's hard to gram stain. And it's also hard to get antibiotics to work against it. Like antibiotics that work against the normal bacterial cell wall are not gonna work against this organism. Um, so we test for it by testing for the antibodies. Um, so I talk about all that in the in the um, video. Okay, it's hard to treat because it's so slow growing and because of this waxy um, cell wall. Okay, so we, there's also a lot of antibiotic resistant. So when it, it does exist, there are antibiotic resistant strains. Okay, so you have to use a combination of antibiotics and you have to take them for a really long time, like six months to a year. Okay, now Legionnaire's disease is different from the other ones. So lower respiratory tract, right? It's different because it's waterborne. So it's a waterborne pneumonia. So you might find it in um, hot tub, or air conditioning units or any place where they have water stored in a big tank. Okay, so it also, it survives in a protozoa. Okay, so totally weird, right? So it's gonna survive inside this other little organism. Um, so the organism that causes it is called Legionella, Legionella um, pneumophila. Imagine that. Oh, sorry, this is getting messy. Okay, so transmitted through water, signs and symptoms. So they're gonna have a 
they're going to have a cough. It takes a while to actually figure it out. So dry cough, um, sometimes people get pleurisy with it. Okay, now viral lower respiratory tract, I have two on here. So one is RSV, so that's respiratory syncytial virus. Um, so it mainly is gonna cause problems with elderly and infants. Okay, they just released information that they now have a vaccine for it. Um, so sign symptoms with the newborns or premature babies, they have a really hard time with it. So it's it's kind of basically like a pneumonia, right? So um, coughing, I mean, like everything we're talking about is gonna be coughing, right? And then um, flu, is um, the causal agent, it's viral, right? So there's all sorts of flu viruses and they are enveloped. Okay, and they're part of the family ortho mix of day, which I don't ask you that. Okay, so anyone's at risk for it. Um, to prevent it, right, we do the flu vaccine um, to treat, we treat the symptoms, but we do have some antivirals. Um, I talk about like more stuff in the in the PowerPoint notes. Now, the things that we worry about when we talk about antigenic drift and antigenic shift, and the idea that flu vaccines are gonna flu is gonna mutate. Okay, so drift is seasonal variation. Okay, so this just means that the virus is mutating within the flu season, right? But antigenic shift is the scary one. So this is the idea that one cell gets infected by two different flu viruses, and then they recombine to create something that we've never seen before. Okay, and that's shift, antigenic shift. So this is where, where they start to worry about a new pandemic. Okay, now when they're talking about um, flu, so they are talking about the H's and the N's. That has to deal with the receptors that are on the surface of it. Okay, so there are hemagglutin receptors and then there's neuroamidase receptors and they've categorized them. So they can, that's just basically what they look at and how they identify them. Okay, now let's go here. So new import. Uh, I downloaded, oh, where is it? How do I, no, oh, I downloaded it. But it's not showing up. All right, hold on, let me go back here. Cause I thought I downloaded the, the other chapters. All right, hold on. So let's do your, I guess we'll do the sex ones first. I thought I already downloaded it though. Nope. Okay. Let's do it. Mode. Okay, and then if I go here. All right, so, um, yeah, right, I have all these. So the big thing, like when you're studying for this, the big, the big thing I want you to think about Okay, is I want you to think about, so think about the anatomy, right, of the body parts. And then I want you to think about, um, so for the diseases, I know the name, I know what causes it. And then I would look at the book, look at the notes and try to figure out and listen to the PowerPoints that I already made. And they're going to tell you the distinct things about 
that disease. Okay, so now if you go, is urine sterile the first thing, right? It is until it comes out the opening, right? Okay, so now what's bacterial cystitis? So that is like a urinary tract infection. Um, the organism that typically causes it is E. coli. Okay, so it gets from where it's supposed to be, right, in the feces, and it ends up where it's not supposed to be. What groups of people are most susceptible to UTI? So women, because the urethra is shorter. Um, how's it usually treated? So with antibiotics, how can they be pre prevented? So drink water, um, urinate after sex, wipe properly. Okay, then pyelonephritis is when a urinary tract infection goes and becomes a kidney infection. So that's when we become more worried, right? So you wanna to try to um, not get a kidney infection. You don't wanna damage your kidneys. Um, leptospirosis. So leptospirosis is caused by a spirochete. Okay, and it's transmitted through the urine of animals. Okay, so they're gonna prevent it by vaccinating the animals and staying away from animal urine. Um, so you can treat it with antibiotics. Okay, bacterial vaginosis, they don't know what causes it. Okay, but you can look um, the organism that, I'm trying to hold on, get to 27. So um, the organism that's gonna increase and decrease is, um, what do they call it? Bacterial vaginosis, the lactobacillus changes, right? Which the lactobacillus is the good bacteria, the good organism that we want. So um, if that changes, that goes down, then this other organism that goes up is the Gardenella, Gardnerella. Makes it sound like a Disney princess, right? but it's not a Disney princess for sure, right? Um, clue cells are cells that are covered in bacteria and that's what they use to um, diagnose it. It smells bad. Um, it can induce premature birth. Um, it's hard to treat. So they try to make sure that you maintain lactobacillus, right? But it's kind of hard. This one's hard to treat because they don't totally understand it. Um, Oh, shoot. What did I do? Okay. Um, PID is pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay, so you guys can look it up and remember what it is, right? Um, Volvo vaginal candiditis. So that's a yeast infection, right? So it's caused by candida is the yeast, um, the symptoms, so itchy, discharge, um, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis. So you guys go in and, and look at the symptoms, know the organism that causes it, okay, and know, um, like, I guess something about the disease, right, which these are pretty linear, <laughs> right, the, um, I put a hose, it doesn't survive well outside a hose, a host. <laughs> okay, so gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia. You guys just look, look them up, know the organism that causes it. Syphilis, remember it has different stages. Know what's typical about the stages. What's congenital syphilis? I mean, this stuff is pretty, pretty linear, pretty straightforward. You just need to know the disease and know the organism. Um, herpes right? HPV, that's the one that we can actually control with a vaccine. Um, I don't really ask you many questions about HIV at all. Okay, so don't really worry about that. And then trico, trichomoniasis, make sure you understand what causes it, what makes it different. So this one's caused by a protozoan. So read about that. Okay, now let's go back here. 
I know we did chapter 27 because last year people, at, they wanted to do that chapter. They were so I kind of jumped ahead and did that chapter and now I've kept it in there. Okay, so skin diseases. I don't think I can write like this. Okay, so let me download it. Uh, it's format, bringing them in here, weird, but, okay, so Rocky Mountain spotted fever, the pathogen that causes it, it's rickettsia. So what's important to remember about this is that this is an obligate intracellular parasite. So that means it has to live in a cell. So that's why they had such a hard time figuring it out. Um, so how do people get skin infections, right? So usually through a wound or an opening. Um, look over the vocabulary about the lesions and the rashes um, that, are, that are the words used to describe them. I might have one question about that. Um, make sure you know the organism that causes acne. Okay, and you know general information about treatment. Okay, infections of the hair follicles, those are the um, boils, right? Furuncles, carbuncles. Okay, it's caused by Staph aureus, right? Staphylococcal scalded skin syndromes, another Staph aureus. Um, that's the one where the Staph actually produces a protein that causes the skin to exfoliate. Um, so antibiotics, right? So impetigo is the scabby rash, um, very contagious. It's a combination of strep and staph. Okay, so staph aureus is all over the place. Um, cutaneous anthrax. Um, I don't even think I have any questions about that on there. So don't worry about that. Varicella, remember that's chicken pox. Um, oh, shoot. Ru rubiella, right, and rubella. Make sure you know those. Okay, and you can distinguish rubiella is measles and rubella is the German measles, right? And MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella. That's the vaccine. And now they put the chicken pox. So sometimes you get MMRV. Fungal diseases of skin or things like ringworm or jock itch, athlete's foot. Um, you should know Copelix got spots are associated with measles. That's the big thing that's different about it. I think you guys, like I would maybe make a card for each disease and know the organism that causes it and know some, like un, be familiar with the diseases. That's what I'm asking you. Um, Candida albicans can cause, that's a diaper rash. And this thing can also cause any, like in anybody that's wearing a diaper, right? So in elderly people, I've heard, heard some lady call it granny diaper rash, right? Okay, so there's that. And then one more. Let's do wounds, which wounds, wounds are interesting to me, which I guess they're, they're kind of gross. Like I don't like to look at them, but I think they're, did it go? Download. All right. Yeah, it's formatting them weird. Okay, so, so wounds, right? How do you get infections in skin from wounds? So it's got to be, you got to break the skin, right? And whether you actually get an infection or not depends on the same kind of things we've been talking about all 
semester, right? How virulent is the microbe, right? How many cells, whoops, how many cells of the microbe do you have? Is the host okay? Are they healthy or do they have a weak immune system? And what kind of wound do you have? So is the wound deep or is it superficial? Is it puncture? Is it jagged? Okay, is there debris in there? Okay, so I've missed a T. So now look at the types of wounds in general, right? So just recognize them. Um, remember what an abscess is. I have that. I know I asked you that. Um, they're hard to treat because they don't have a blood supply going to them. So they're kind of like this, like a little island full of pus and like bacteria. And it's hard to get um, antibiotics to it. Plus the bacteria that are in there, they just kind of start like lingering. They're not metabolically active. So it's hard to get the antibiotic to work on them. Okay, so now if a wound gets infected, right, it could, you could go septic, right? So it could spread to the rest of the body and cause serious problems. If su surgical wounds get infected, they don't heal. Um, so if they don't heal, that's not good. If you have this open sore, um, let's see. Most wounds are caused by Staph aureus and Staph epidermidis. And you guys know, I mean, like these are things that are part of our normal microbiome. So they're everywhere, they're hanging out. So if they're everywhere and they're hanging out, it's really easy for them to get in an opening and cause problems. Okay, pyogenic, you guys know that means there's pus involved. Um, What's the difference between Staph aureus infections, whoops, Staph aureus infections and Staph epidermidis infections? So aureus is healthcare associated. So most people end up with, well, not most people, but sometimes people end up with MRSA as a result of it um, being in the healthcare setting. Whereas Staph epidermidis is more community centered. So it's out there in the world more. Um, the coagulase test is what distinguishes Staph aureus from other staph. And I talk about that in the PowerPoint notes. Um, I don't think I ask you about this, so don't worry about that. Make sure you know MRSA and VRSA um, and why they're a problem. Okay, flesh-eating disease is caused by the streptococcus pyogenes. And you guys can look at, look at this because I talk about a whole bunch in the notes. It's not really common, um, but I put, put a link to this. This is the article about the people that are using the fentanyl and trank. And the trank causes wounds and then people get, get infections from it. Not from the organism, but they end up with bacterial infections. Okay, there, I left, I wrote all that on there. Um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, it's green, okay? So it's an opportunistic um, pathogen. It's, it's everywhere. It causes hospital acquired infections. It will survive in like, peroxide or water. It's really, really hard to kill. Um, let's see, so hospital acquired infections that can get into wounds, right? Um, community infections, it actually causes things like swimmers ear or eye infections. It's very, very, very widespread. It's everywhere. Um, you can treat it with antibiotics. It's actually hard to kill, but the big, so the big thing is going to be pre preventing it. Okay, now I have some anaerobic bacterial wounds. Okay, so this is tetanus. And 
I go over it in the PowerPoint notes to walk you through and answer all those questions. Um, gas gangrene, okay, is another clostridium. So it's caused by clostridium perfringens or tetanus is clostridium tetani. Remember, these are the things that they form spores. So they're in the soil, they're everywhere. Um, oh, and bites. So the big thing to know about bites is that most of the time the infections are synergistic. So you get a whole bunch of bacteria in there together and um, all of them together cause a greater problem than if it was just one of them by itself. So treatment is to not get bit, right? And if you get bit to clean out the wound really good. Um, okay, so I think that kind of covers it.